if you've seen signs that say keep off the lawn, raise your hand. Now, do you all keep off the lawn when those signs are up there? My dog doesn't. My dog doesn't. A funny thing happens when you ask a classroom of young children or a neighborhood of grown men to draw the American dream. A lawn is almost always a part of the picture. This looks nice. You live a certain way. As a lawn care professional, Paul Tukey used to think that way too. But winding up in the hospital, first as a patient, then as a father, had a way of changing his outlook. So did his trip to a small town named Hudson. They expect not for all compliance. They're not counting on the changing of the guard. Better stand up. I had a woman come to me in September of 1984. She had a rash on her feet. By May of 1985, an unlikely Canadian doctor decided to speak out about a startling connection between beautiful lawns and hospital visits. She wrote letters to the editors. She organized petitions and rallies. For six years, a sheep farming dermatologist named June Irwin was relentless. They knew what I was doing. <laughs> A child of 10 months old fell sick with vomiting, diarrhea, and fever, and became comatose. The etiological inquiry revealed that her paraplegia was due to an intoxication by a derivative of 2,4-D utilized to kill weeds. June Irwin was not taken seriously initially. Absolutely nuts. Like, totally off the wall. Lives with their sheep. But the thing about June Irwin is that she sounded right. By May of 1991, Hudson's mayor had heard enough. Even under the threat of lawsuits from some of the world's largest chemical companies, the town council passed North America's first prohibition on the application of weed and insect killers. The same stuff most U.S. homeowners apply by the tens of tons every spring, summer, and fall. The billion-dollar lawn care industry was outraged at the mayor and his clerk. We have just decided to bring this case to the uh, higher court. I wasn't afraid. I said, sure, we'll go, you know, we'll go to court with this. Sure. And the twit from Camelon, excuse the Anglo-Saxon, came in with a bottle of pesticide. And he suggested to the judge that he was going to drink it. Well, the judge of went spooky. In this case, I don't think any of us thought that we were making history. I don't think so. Hear me now. Stand up. Stand up. A chemical reaction. It's a film about one town that dared to stand up and in the process, change the world. Now